All right, in this video, I'm going to be refurbishing this trailer I picked up for 200 bucks. The last owner actually had a Montauk 17 Classic. I guess you call it a custom. It was uh, early 70s or mid 70s on it. When he sold the boat, the guy who bought the boat didn't want the trailer. Picked it up for 200 bucks. Now, considering I want to change the trailer that the boat is on now, This seemed like a great opportunity. I'll probably put a couple of hundred more bucks into it. It needs bunks. Uh, he did put Stoltz rollers on the entire thing, front to back. He's got a new axle, new springs, um, new lights. I'm going to rerun the lights, though, the wiring. But anyway, I'm going to be doing this piecemeal, so you'll see me changing clothes, whatever it is, um, as I do different things to this boat. I hope to have it completed in about two weeks and uh, or less, and that way we can move the boat over to it, mount the engine, and get, keep going with the restoration or the reconstruction, however you want to look at it. Anyway, before I go any further, go ahead and hit the uh, subscribe button, hit the bell, and get notifications when I put videos up in the future. I had to put a trailer jack on this because it just kind of annoys me that it doesn't have one, but that's all right. Um, it wasn't that expensive, and it was pretty easy to put on. All right, so to start, we're going to disassemble various parts of the trailer. And we're going to start with the uh, winch post and basically just take that whole thing off. That way we can um, replace the bolts, the U-bolts. And the plan is to replace all the hardware or as much of the hardware as possible on this trailer. All right, the next step after that was to take the bunk brackets off. But before we did that, we measured exactly how much height there was on the bunk brackets as well as how um, how wide they were and how far away they were from the edge of the trailer. So that way we could put them back on as much as possible. Another phase of, another phase of this step was uh, pull the uh, lights off the trailer and pull the wiring back to coil it up so that we can uh, recover it later. So this trailer is galvanized steel and there were some spots that were rusty so the next logical step for me was to use aluminum oxide in my little hand blaster and get rid of any loose rust, um, loose scale that might be there and that way we could prep it for the next step. Once I got that done, the next step was to cold galvanize those areas that we had hit with the aluminum oxide. Uh, basically, this can you see here is powdered zinc. Supposedly, it does a better job of rust protection than hot good galvanized. I don't know if that's true or not, but I did want to cover up those spots and prevent uh, or at least hold back any future rusting. What we did after that is reinstall the bunk brackets. Now, before we did that, I did measure the boat. I actually measured inside strake to inside strake, and I adjusted the bunk brackets to that. And the whole idea is that by having the bunk brackets meet up with the strakes exactly, or as close as possible, that the boat would guide onto the trailer a little easier when you're loading it. All right, now that we got done with that, the next step was to put the winch post back on, reassemble everything on the winch post, and replace all the U-bolts on it, which is um, kind of a pain in the butt because I had to order various sizes to finally figure out which ones fit. But we did get that done, and the winch post is now on the boat. Yeah. 
And of course, new bunks would not be new bunks without putting carpeting. So here's a short little segment on getting the carpet onto the new bunk boards, which basically are two by fours. And I use this method to cap the ends. Uh, I'm not going to claim to be a expert on replacing carpet on bunks, but this seems to be a neat way to do it. So the next step after that was installing the bunks and what I did in this case was I trimmed away the carpet to where the uh, brackets would go, stapled the back down and then again um, then of course installed the bunks and uh, basically it's just four bolts, uh, four, four lag bolts. I use stainless so no uh, chance of it rotting away. In this segment, I installed the uh, guide ons. I had taken them off already prior to even beginning any of the, any of the taping. And what I found was that the brackets that the guide ons had were pretty much unusable. So I ordered new ones. Uh, again, not too expensive, but worth it. We're pretty much done with the trailer at this point, with the exception of one thing we got to put the lights on and we got to run the wiring. Installing the actual lights is actually pretty routine. It's two bolts and a ground wire, so I won't go into too much detail there. This is what we were doing uh, right here. I ran the original wire back to the trailer neck using uh, electrical fish tape. Uh, I, keep, I keep two of them around, actually. A uh, 50 footer and a 25 footer, they come in quite handy. You'll probably see me use it later on on a whaler when I run the, uh, or try to run the uh, bow light um, underneath the rub rail. We'll see how that goes. So the wiring, uh, one of the things I found when I got the trailer was it was tie wrapped to the sides of the frame and was basically all sitting on the outside. It wasn't very clean. So I ended up getting these little, I don't even know what you call them, but basically they're zip ties uh, with a grommet on it and you drill a quarter inch hole, pop the grommet in and it'll hold the wiring in. One of the things you'll see is that, and this is for pretty much all the wiring I do, is the um, the crimpers that I use all have heat shrink um, caps on them. And in this case, I haven't heat shrunk them yet because I want to test the wiring and the lights out before I heat shrink them. So that pretty much wraps up uh, the trailer restoration. Is it done? Yes, for now. Um, are there more things I want to do? Uh, yeah, I did capture it, but I bought some tires, um, replacement rollers, um, shafts for the rollers. Uh, it's uh, basically a classic case of scope creep where once you think you're done, you think of a few more things to do. So, But I'm done after those two things. The tires and the um, rods that go into the rollers, uh, I'll be done. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, hit share and like, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.